Hey then guys, welcome back to Invested Intelligence. Before we get into the charts, I want to bring your attention to a couple of articles, one of them being the uh, signature bank deposits excluding crypto sold to Flagstar by FDIC. Uh, and the other one is this article here about Microsoft testing built-in crypto wallet for Edge browser. Now, I'll, I'll just briefly go over this one. I think it's interesting now we're starting to see some of these big giants, these tech companies, um, you know, and familiar names starting to come into, you know, the cryptocurrency space and try to incorporate a lot of different things. Um, but the question for me isn't that they're doing this because ultimately cryptocurrency isn't going anywhere. I think the biggest issue is how can it be controlled? This is all, this has always been the problem, right? And when we start to see these big giants coming into the cryptocurrency space and trying to adopt certain technologies, the question remains, who is going to be in control? of cryptocurrency when the time comes. As we progress and as things get more and more and more sort of integrated into a lot of the products and services that we use on a daily basis, are we then going to have to adhere to certain terms and conditions? Are we going to have to KYC when we don't want to over very trivial things that shouldn't really require KYC? Are we going to have to you know, um, adhere to, like I said, certain terms and conditions that we would never normally adhere to. Um, this is all under the guise of safety, you know, that they need to be able to keep us safe when we're engaging with their services. So they know we're not going to get scammed and all of this sort of stuff. But the reality is it's never been about that. This will always be about control. And some of these bigger players, as they start to come into the cryptocurrency space, so for example, Apple, I'm assuming at some point will have a way for us to be able to uh, pay with cryptocurrency using, you know, Apple Pay and so on. I mean, ultimately, that is where we're headed with all, you know, with all of this, and that is going to come. But you know, Apple and Microsoft and Samsung and Sony and some of these massive, massive companies—they're not in the habit of giving control over to anybody, um, you know—and they have to adhere to certain terms and conditions and regulatory compliance, uh, you know, as companies and what they do. So that's all going to filter over into whatever tech you know they kind of build into their services. So There's definitely something to uh, you know to keep in mind. And just remember, you know, the the idea for us is to always have control over our cryptocurrency. So we will always have that choice whether or not to engage. But I'll leave you with this in this particular article. If the service that is being provided is a needed service, right, that you have to have for your business, for example, um, then that may cause a problem when you don't really want to engage the way that they want you to engage when it comes to payment. So just something to think about. Now, so, you know, signature bank deposits excluding crypto sold to Flagstar by FDIC. I won't go into this, you know, in too much detail, but the reality is, you know, they, they kind of sold the bank to um, uh, Flagstar. Uh, now, what's interesting is the agreement was that uh, bank was one of the largest. Da, 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 da. Now, here's the interesting thing from March 20th, which is today, all signature bank branches will start operating as Flagstar banks and all deposits by customers will be insured up to 250,000, you know, by the FDIC. That's normal. You know, America uh, is very used to the FDIC sort of cap at 250, you know, grand. The part that was left out of the deal was the 4 billion in digital assets that Signature Bank held. The FDIC reported that they would transfer the digital assets directly to customers who opened a digital asset account with Signature Bank. Considering that Signature Bank had 88.6 billion in crypto deposits on December the 31st, 2022, their digital asset holdings have decreased drastically. So think about that. Signature Bank had 88.6 billion. If we, you know, if we, we're just reading an article here, obviously, if we believe the numbers that we're seeing, 88.6 billion in crypto deposits on December the 31st, 2022. That's not that long ago. And as of today, the 20th of March, 4 billion was left out of this deal in digital assets that they're going to be sending back to, you know, anybody that held, uh, you know, sort of a digital asset account, whatever with Signature Bank. That is a huge disparity uh, and definitely something that I'm going to be looking into, you know, see if I can kind of get a little bit more detail in terms of the whole Signature Bank and the asset side of things. Um, I'm sure at some point, you know, that that information is either readily available or will be readily available. I just need to kind of, you know, sort of take a look. Um, but there's a lot of shenanigans that happen. You know, if we just read a little bit further down, there is um, there is a, an article here where, sorry, there is a, a, a part of this article here that basically says previously there was a misconception that any company uh, or bank willing to buy a signature bank would have to leave crypto deposits behind. However, a spokesman from the FDIC refuted those claims at the time, but considering that this major acquisition of deposits and loans by Flagstar Bank doesn't include crypto, shows the FDIC must have lied in their statement. And not to kind of beat this to death, but we see this a lot. We see, 
you know, that the kind of push of information that goes out there and you see thousands of tweets about a lot of different things when it comes to Signature Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, you know, and so on, uh, and Silvergate. There's so much information out there that it's almost like, let's confuse everybody as much as we possibly can. And then in the background, we basically just do what we want. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a lot of this that's been kind of going round and round where... I, 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 I honestly think at this point that the brazenness of some of the information that is being presented and some of the things that are being said in Congress and some of the things that are being said by, you know, the Fed are so just completely devoid of reality. They just don't care anymore. And I think ultimately we are going to end up in a situation where as this filters out and we start to, to feel the kind of cracks within the system, you know, as a lot of these banks go under, I think that's when it's really going to start to hit home, you know, that some of the things that they've been doing really aren't in the best, you know, the best interest um, of, you know, their clients and their, their customers uh, and more within the interest of keeping those who have a large amount of money, you know, uh, deposited with, you know, said banks. They're the ones that they're trying to protect. And I think before we get to the charts, what's really, really interesting is that the very thing they're trying to control, cryptocurrency, you know, um, they use for their own purposes, right, to hide money. That's just my opinion. Obviously, I'm not, you know, pointing fingers at anybody, but uh, I just find it interesting that if you dig a little bit deeper, you do find a lot of that, you know, sort of happening. So if we get over to the charts, obviously, Bitcoin is continuing. You know, it's moved to the upside. Um, we have this really nice push now. The last time I gave an update in terms of analysis, I was saying between sort of 29.5 to around about 32.394. Uh, this area up here, now if we just go over to the weekly chart, you can kind of see this a little bit better. Uh, but ultimately, we've got a really strong week from last week. I still, and I'm going to completely, I'm going to continue to to maintain this. For now, you know, it feels like uh, Bitcoin is the kind of safe haven play um, for a lot of this money. It's coming into cryptocurrency, but there's no sustainable volume by retail or some of these bigger institutions to allow or to continue pushing Bitcoin to the upside. If there is some profit taking or if there is some you know, selling that comes into Bitcoin, I don't think there's going to be enough to sustain it. Now, I want to be really clear. This doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get a complete tank to the downside. But what that means is if price starts to, say, drop a little bit lower this week to around about 25K, maybe 24, 23, there's not enough buying pressure and people engaging within cryptocurrency, and especially with Bitcoin, to keep it you know, um, from dropping and dropping and dropping. Um, it may stabilize because ultimately it would just be a lot of profit taking because it works both ways, right? If there's not enough volume coming into crypto to keep it going up, then whatever is sustaining this move at the moment, if that is removed from the market, then crypto, uh, sorry, Bitcoin would basically just filter back to where it roughly was, 22, 23, you know, and kind of just hover around there until volume comes back into cryptocurrency again. So some things to consider, but for now, it looks like this week is starting a little bit up. Uh, we may continue to get that drive to the upside, like I said, 29.5 to around about 32.3. Um, this area up here for me, it doesn't necessarily mean it's just like the, the line in the sun. But what I was saying previously is if we break 25 and we hold in this area and start to pull back and sustain that level, 26, 27 ish, somewhere around there, then we can start to break this down on lower time frames, four hour hourly, and try to get a little bit of a feel for whether or not this is going to continue to the upside or whether we are eventually going to see price recede and come back down confirming that this is indeed a rally in a downtrend. So some things to consider on Bitcoin, if we go over to Binance, Binance on the monthly chart is just showing a little bit of upside. Obviously, as I've said many, many times, and I will continue to say this, this is a broad range consolidation. We've hit this top end here. We don't need this anymore. So obviously, as long as we're staying within this area, top side, obviously, this was the FTX acquisition, which went to crap. Uh, and then ultimately, we dropped, reversed. We had this little bit of you know pickup of buy side. Um, and then obviously, we're driving forward. Now, we've got around about a week and a half left of this month. Um, it is possible that we see a little bit more upside, maybe 360, uh, but Binance isn't as strong as Bitcoin at the moment, which also adds, you know, credence to the fact that um, Bitcoin is getting a lot of the volume at the moment and a lot of that money that's going into Bitcoin to try and keep it safe from some of these uh, things that are happening within the banking sector um, is what's pushing Bitcoin you know, and not so much Binance. But having said that, there is still a lot of strength within, you know, the last week's candle. So we could continue um, top end probably around about 376. But I don't know if we're going to see that. I think we'd have to see something pretty significant in terms of volume coming into crypto um, and, and, and continued volume coming into Bitcoin to really see Binance up around about 360 to 380. Um, so that will be very interesting. And then 400, obviously, is like a key level for Binance. Um, so all in all, 
things are starting a little bit slow this week. Be mindful. There is so much news coming this week. We've got the, you know, the rate announcement. We have a lot of other things going on in terms of the, you know, the um, um, economic calendar. So obviously tomorrow we have, you know, existing home and then obviously federal funds rate on Wednesday. Got unemployment claims. Um, and there's a lot of this going on all the way through the entire week. So just be mindful. We could see a lot of volatility this week. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to spill over into cryptocurrency itself. But um, like I said, when you have news releases and especially the federal funds rate, everyone's going to be watching that. You know, um, people are expecting 25 basis points. It is looking like that, you know, that that is going to be the case, you know, but ultimately we want to see whether that's priced in at the moment. Um, uh, and obviously that's going to filter into the stock market first and then it will kind of, you know, move over to cryptocurrency if at all. So we'll see. So with that said, I hope everyone's having an absolutely fantastic day or evening wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next update. All the best. Take care. Ciao for now.